Salutations everyone, this is Razor here with episode 3 of the Perfect Call of Duty series where I take a look at all the existing Call of Duties and try to uh, learn the mistakes from each one, taking a look at uh, what each has had to offer us and try to make a simple uh, quality blueprint that's very easy to follow and that can be done. So I'm not going to be adding anything extra. Um, like an extra perk that's brand new uh, because I don't know uh, anything about programming and all the difficulties that goes into making a perk in Call of Duty and I'm also not going to be adding an extra tier so this is the best that I could do without creating a brand new perk or an extra tier and just taking what uh, perks have already existed in existing Call of Duty games and uh, making an all-star selection with making a few minor tweaks here and there to uh, balance things out so uh, without further ado starting off is going to be the tier 1 perks the blue guys uh, starting off with recon which is going to behave identical to how it does in Modern Warfare 3 both the regular and pro variants it's a very underrated perk and I believe it fits well in this perk slot so uh, nothing needs to be changed there moving on we have sleight of hand which is of course a staple in the Call of Duty franchise but there's going to be a little bit of a tweak here uh, faster reload of course uh, but uh, with Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops, that faster ADS was just a little too strong uh, for many people's liking and uh, it needed to be balanced. So they took it out, the ADS for a quick draw, put that in second tier slot, but then they made the ability to switch to secondaries faster, which just made those Akimbo FMG9 kits even better and just made pistols absolutely obsolete because all of a sudden uh, that faster switch time that the pistol had over everything else is null and void so what this pro ability is going to be is the ability to uh, pick up uh, weapons and equipment off the ground uh, much faster uh, I believe that uh, pro variance every perk does, should not be stronger than the uh, regular perk itself yet still complementary to the perk and makes sense with it as well so I think this is a good compliment sleight of hand yet uh, not too strong and overpowered so next up for the tier 1 perk slot, we have Marathon, which is going to be how it behaved in Modern Warfare 2, in that you have unlimited sprint, and the Pro variant allows you to uh, climb over obstacles faster. This is the best Marathon that COD has given us to date, and uh, it needs to be backed this way because a Marathon needs to have unlimited sprint in order to compete with the other perks in this tier slot. Uh, it is not overpowered. For, to have the ability to run for you know 10 minutes straight that is not overpowered in any way whatsoever it does change the way that people will play search and destroy but that's just one game mode and we had to deal with it in Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops and that handled just fine so uh, Marathon needs to have unlimited sprint and the ability to vault over the obstacles uh, faster as well we'll be able to uh, complement Marathon and have it uh, a bit of uh, competition in the tier 1 perk slot which has uh, some other strong ones as well uh, I believe it's it's good in the perk slot it is in and uh, uh, that's it for that um, next up uh, for the uh, tier 1 I have Stalker which would behave exactly how it does in Modern Warfare 3 uh, it was a great addition and uh, in the tier 3 perk slot I believe that there needed to be some uh, things changed around and uh, many people think that Overkill or that uh, Stalker is uh, too strong. That uh, there are weaker perks to compete with it. And I think putting it in the tier one uh, gives us competition with the, the best marathon yet, sleight of hand, of course, and recon, which is you know very underused and uh, underestimated. And uh, I believe that those are four strong perks for the tier one perk slot. And the last perk for the tier one would be overkill. I really couldn't think of anything else to uh, to put into this tier 1 perk slot without screwing things up and uh, without creating my own perk I decided to put an overkill because uh, you know it's still gonna have its fans and uh, I, I believe that um, if it's going to be in any place it should not be in the tier 2 where there are such strong uh, perks traditionally in that slot in tier 3 there's always just going to be something better so I think tier 1 is the best spot for overkill and while it's not a great perk uh, there really wasn't anything better that I can put in there without messing up the balance and so forth so uh, once again recap recon, sleight of hand, marathon, stalker and overkill in the tier 1 perk slot now moving on to tier 2 this is where the heavy hitters are the first one is going to be UAV jammer now this is your uh, your ghost, your assassin, your UAV jammer, your camouflage, what have you. 
you're immune to the UAV, so you do not show up on the UAV or spy plane or whatever it is, and that is its only function. There's none of this, no red na name over your head when your crosshairs are on you. I think that needs to be in the game. Uh, it's just too strong, otherwise promotes camping, and uh, everything in my perfect Call of Duty, uh, from, come from the kill streaks to the perks to the weapons to the, everything, it's going to be anti-camping, -cam taking away all the tools that uh, promote camping, and I think UAV Jammer does deserve to still be a uh, perk that allows you to be immune from UAV. It's been a staple in the Call of Duty franchise so far, and uh, it does have its place. Uh, most of the noobs, uh, you know, use it so they can uh, stay away from people that are getting kill streaks and so forth. Uh, but I still believe uh, that UAV needs a counter, and uh, it's perfect in the tier 2 perk slot. And the pro variant of UAV Jammer would be the immunity to counter UAV. I thought this was the the only thing that really made sense with a name like UAV Jammer, being immune to UAV and counter UAV, uh, made it strong, complementary to each other, and not overpowered. So none of this, you know, invisible to a hundred different things. All it does, all it does, immune to UAV and the pro variant, immune to counter UAV. That's all it does. I believe it's strong and balanced that way. And next up in the tier 2 perk slot, we're going to put in Blind Eye, because UAV Jammer or Assassin or Ghost, whatever you want to call it, it has to be in the same tier perk slot as Blind Eye, otherwise it's just too strong, being absolutely immune to everything in the entire game. And this Blind Eye would be a, a direct um, copy and paste over from Modern Warfare 3 edition, uh, being immune to uh, you know sentries not showing up on a you know as you know a highlighted thing on air support and all this other all the other good stuff, uh, faster lock on with the pro variant. So just like how it is in Modern Warfare 3, that's how Blind Eye will be, and in the tier two perk slot as well. Next up, we have Quick Draw, which I thought, which I think is a well balanced in the tier two perk slots uh, as it is. Uh, you know, faster ADS, and uh, also the ability to use quit equipment faster, whether that be a, uh, you know, uh, tactical nades or uh, you know, lethal grenades or C4s or throwing knives, whatever. Equipment being used faster uh, definitely is still be in there. And I think an addition to quick draw that has to be added into like the, the pro variant where you use equipment faster is the ability to use those remotes faster, to call on the UAV, to call on your attack helicopter. That needs to be a snap thing with quick draw because I think it complements uh, the initial part of the perk and is also uh, you know, a, a good benefit to the perk. Uh, next up, we have Hardline, which is going to be identical for Modern Warfare 3, the first uh, Call of Duty to get, Mon to get Hardline right. You know, one less kill for your kill streaks, and the uh, pro variant is uh, two assists counts as one point towards your point streak. So, uh, just as it is Modern Warfare 3, I think it's perfect, and it fits right in the tier 2 perk slot. And then rounding out the tier 2 would be uh, Blast Shield or Flak Jacket, whatever you want to call it, it's your anti explosive perk. Uh, it's going to, you know, behave much better than it is in Modern Warfare 3, because let's face it, Blast Shield is insanely uh, underpowered in Modern Warfare 3. It honestly almost does nothing uh, in core game modes, and it actually literally does nothing in uh, hardcore game modes, unlike Flak Jacket from Black Ops. So uh, this Blast Shield or Flak Jacket, whatever you want to call it, needs to have a specific multiplier for core and hardcore game modes uh, in order for there to be usability in both game modes. And uh, it needs to be better to was in Modern Warfare 3. The blast uh, explosive resistance has to be more similar to what it is uh, in Black Ops as of now. So that's it for the Tier 2 perk slot. UAV, Jammer, Blind Eye, Quick Draw, Hardline, and Blast Shield. And uh, lastly, we have the Tier 3 perk slot, the Yellow Guys. And uh, you're going to see a couple familiar faces and uh, someone out of order as well. Uh, first off, Scavenger. Uh, I think should be in the tier 3 perk slot. It can't be in the tier 2 because uh, it just couldn't compete with all those other guys. And uh, I believe that Scavenger needs to be in a different perk slot than Sleight of Hand. Um, just because it allows people to uh, play the game in more ways uh, than what the game allows them to be. Uh, you know, only if you had Specialist in Modern Warfare 3 could you have both at the same time. I believe Black Ops got it right when they had Scavenger and Sleight of Hand in different tier perk slots, and uh, I think that needs to continue. Uh, so, and that uh, Scavenger would be exactly how it is in Modern Warfare 2. It uh, refills one full clip of your primary weapon, 
uh, one full clip of your secondary weapon, that, that being a pistol or machine pistol. If it's a launcher, it uh, replenishes one rocket, and it'll replenish a one a tactical grenade and uh, one lethal grenade when it, you get to the uh, the pro variant. But um, I think it should replenish, you know, one of everything, uh, pretty much like how it does in Modern Warfare 2, but uh, without the overpoweredness of the Modern Warfare 2 scavenger, which will make more sense once I get to the uh, the equipment and so forth in a later episode. So uh, next up we have uh, Steady Aim, which is going to be a port like it is in Black Ops and Modern Warfare 3, identical, you know, tighter hip spread and then a fast recovery after sprinting. So I think it's perfect where it is and how it is. Uh, steady aim. Uh, next up, we have a dead silence, which I think uh, they got right in Mono Warfare 3. Outside of the uh, the uh, resistance against recon, I think that has to be taken out uh, just to add some more balance to the game. Uh, dead silence is already good enough as it is. It's always going to be a popular choice. It's a good tier. It's good a tier three perk. It should stay in there and uh, not be messed with too much. Uh, sit rep. Uh, as the fourth perk, which will be uh, you know detecting enemy equipment, and also I think you should be able to detect kill streaks when you're looking up in the sky. I believe that UAV or attack helicopter should be highlighted in red, and you'll be able to even see it through buildings. So uh, that can be uh, you know very g well complemented with blind eye in the tier two perk slot to uh, you know be really anti enemy equipment and kill streaks. I believe sit rep has always been really like underrepresented and it's hard to compete with like steady aim and dead silence. So I think that sit rep, the ability to detect enemy equipment is good, but I also uh, think the ability to uh, not just detect sentry guns, but uh, UAVs and uh, helicopters should be easier to spot as well, uh, you know, whether they highlight it in red or something like that. Uh, also with the pro variants, you'll be able to hack sentries and care packages. Uh, like you could in Black Ops. I thought that was awesome and be a hacker and uh, I think that needs to return because that was, uh, that was really cool. It uh, gave it a little bit of extra power and uh, more use in the tier 3 perk slot and um, also it should be able to cancel Dead Silence uh, as it hasn't been in Call of Duty's up till the recent patch of Modern Warfare 3 uh, where it'll just be like if you have sit rep and the enemy has dead silence, it's like they are they don't have any perks uh, whatsoever. So uh, that louder footsteps uh, pro variant of sit rep should also uh, cancel dead silence out. And to round out the tier three perk slot, uh, marksman, exactly how it is in Modern Warfare three, and this will be uh, much more useful uh, since my UAV jammer, assassin, ghost, whatever you want to call it, in the tier two perk slot does not eliminate the uh, red name above you when you are targeted so that'll make marksman much more usable it's already good as it is uh, but uh, this way it uh, it can compete better and uh, that rounds out the tier 3 perk slot scavenger steady aim dead silence sit rep and marksman and also believe that sit rep pro needs to be easier to get because in Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops and uh, Modern Warfare 2 they it took way too long to get sit rep pro uh, than any of the other pro uh, abilities, so uh, whatever limit you have to uh, destroy a certain amount of enemy whatevers, that needs to be lessened so you get it uh, you know, just as quickly as you would Steady Aim Pro or Dead Silence Pro or anything else. But that rounds out the Tier 3 perk slot. So once again, Tier 1, Recon, Sleight of Hand, Marathon, Stock, or Overkill. Tier 2, UAV, Jammer, Blind Eyes, Quick Draw, Hardline, and Blast Shield. And Tier 3, Scavenger, Steady Aim, Dead Silence, Sit Rep, and Marksman. I believe this would be the best uh, perk uh, combination in Call of Duty to date without creating uh, an additional tier or brand new perks, which would be difficult to do uh, just out of thin air without knowing anything about programming. So, uh, wow, this ran really long, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave your comments below. I'm sure we're going to have some disagreements, but I uh, hope you enjoyed my thought and input into the ideas regardless, uh, and I'll see you guys next time.